The January 6th committee could soon hear from a crucial witness in its investigation. Pat Cipollone was White House counsel under former President Trump. A previous witness testified Cipollone expressed grave concerns about the president's actions that day. Scott McFarland reports on this from Capitol Hill. Scott, good morning. Hey, Vlad, good morning. This is a witness the committee has been very clear it wants to talk to and has been leaning on him for weeks to testify on the record. If they speak to the former White House counsel, the committee gets right into the inner circle of former President Trump at pivotal moments before, during, and after January 6th. They took their request to the next level last week, issuing a subpoena for Pat Cipollone, and they did so one day after that blockbuster testimony from Cassidy Hutchinson, in which she testified, Cipollone warned that they'd face every crime imaginable, criminal charge imaginable, if Trump went to the Capitol January 6th. What the committee's going to want to drill into with Pat Cipollone is whether he directly advised the former president about that and whether Donald Trump insisted on going to the Capitol nevertheless. It's likely, if not possible, Cipollone will invoke some form of attorney-client privilege when speaking to this committee. Remains to be seen what questions he will and won't answer. But here's what's certain, Vlad and Anne-Marie. The committee is racing against the clock. Their next public hearing is set for Tuesday morning here at the Capitol. CBS News has learned they'll focus on the role of domestic violent extremist groups, far-right groups ahead of the 6th and on the 6th. That hearing is now officially on the books. Hmm. All right, so Axios, Scott, is reporting that some key House Republicans are threatening to subpoena records from the January 6th committee, that is, if Republicans take, uh, retake the majority next year. What are you hearing about that? Yeah, and the top Republican on the House Committee on Administration has already made that threat, although he lost his primary and won't be returning for the next Congress. <laughs> Other Republicans are now jumping on board. Here's the thing. Republicans almost exclusively have boycotted this committee. They have not taken any seats on it. They pulled all members out once a couple of the Republican choices were blocked by Speaker Nancy Pelosi. And because they've been boycotting the committee, they've been making an argument that it's not properly authorized, not properly composed because their choices weren't seated. Only Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger were by Speaker Pelosi. You're hearing about the next chapter of this fight. If they take the majority next Congress, they pledge to investigate the committee's work try to get some of its documents. This is part of an effort by House Republicans to ding or damage the credibility of the committee as it continues its work and as it continues its public hearings. Yeah, but Scott, let me ask you a follow up on that. I mean, most of the people that have testified, at least publicly uh, for the January 6th committee, have been Republicans or people that are former members of the Trump administration. If Republicans do take control of the House of Representatives uh, after the midterm elections, I mean, who are they going to bring up to testify? I, I just don't understand what the point is other than to say, hey, be careful, because once we get the power, we're going to do the same thing to you. But it just doesn't seem that it would be the same thing, given that you're not going to get Democrats up there testifying in favor of a Republican controlled January 6th committee. Does that make sense what I'm sort of asking? Yeah, well, it sounds like they're, it almost sounds like a threat to like expose the committee in some way, Scott. I don't know if it, they're suggesting that there's something um, nefarious about the way the committee is conducting its I investigation or its business, and so that could possibly be exposed. Uh, the Republicans in the U.S. House are arguing, not that it's nefarious, but that it's political, that it's mm. a campaign effort having this January 6th committee. But Vlad, you mentioned it. I think it's worth underscoring. This committee has not been accidental with its approach. It has had witnesses that are either police officers injured on January 6th or Republican witnesses. They are trying to get around or eliminate this criticism that they're a partisan group by having Republicans at the witness table helping to make this case. And the case the committee's trying to make has been pretty emphatic. They're arguing Donald Trump was part of a conspiracy to defraud the United States. And they have used the voices of Republican witnesses to try to make that argument. Republicans take control of the U.S. House next year. They pledge to investigate this committee, but there's no indication they'll try to have public hearings or uh, high profile public hearings to make their argument. Mm -hmm. What they're doing is what a lot of criminal defendants in their January 6th cases are doing, trying to 
minimize the impact of this committee by calling it unauthorized and not properly composed. Mm. So in the meantime, there's another investigation underway uh, in Georgia. Uh, some of the former president's tro uh, top aides, top allies, are facing subpoenas in Atlanta. Tell us about that. Yes, the Fulton County, Georgia grand jury investigating whether Trump tried to meddle with the election results in Georgia has issued this wave of subpoenas. Some pretty high profile names, including former New York City mayor and Trump legal advisor Rudy Giuliani. There's also another name we've been hearing a lot lately, John Eastman. He's been subpoenaed. He's the California attorney who devised the plan to block the electoral count on January 6th, wrote that memo for Mike Pence. And South Carolina, Senator Lindsey Graham, in addition to Giuliani and Eastman, Senator Graham has been subpoenaed, according to the subpoena. Graham made phone calls to the Georgia Secretary of State's office after the election with questions about absentee ballot tallying. A spokesman for Senator Graham and an attorney for John Eastman did not immediately return requests for comment about the subpoenas, but an attorney for Giuliani says the former mayor has not yet been served with his. This is another open investigation with a lot of open questions for the former president. You know, Eastman and Giuliani, they may be able to argue some sort of like attorney client privilege because there's a really high bar for that. But the senator, Senator Lindsey Graham, I don't know how he's going to avoid this subpoena. Right. So we'll see. To be Scott. continued. Yeah, thank you.